Hello, this is John Sims with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to configure the Avaya IP Office and Avaya B1500 Branch Gateway for secure access link remote alarming. First, some quick notables. Both IP Office and B1500 support native SNMP v1 remote alarming through a customer site SAL gateway. As you see on the screen there, the SAL models are for the IP Office version 2.002 and Branch Gateway 2.001. A standalone SAL gateway is required for all B1500 solutions. Both IP Office and B1500 MIBs are part of the Admin Suite distribution package, found once extracted in the SNMP MIBs directory. And keep in mind, that each IP office and B1500 will have to be registered and issued a unique solution element ID and alarm or product ID by using either the global registration tool or by submitting the SAL Universal Install Product Registration Excel spreadsheet form. So let's start configuring. Under the IP office program group, let's select the manager application. So I'll click to launch the manager application and it'll come up on the screen as you see. Once in manager, we'll select the um, network connect option and select our core unit and enter the proper credentials to pull a configuration from the core unit into the manager application. Once we have a configuration in manager, let's head to the system part of the configuration tree. And under the system, let's go to system events. In system events is where we can enable SNMP and you'll see there'll be a warning here that we have to set the community name so we'll set that to public it can be any customer required name we'll leave the SNMP port alone I'll enter a device ID or alarm ID my contact information the location will leave all the QoS parameters as I'm clicking there alone for the time being and we'll click OK to accept the changes now that we're finalized on this configuration form, let's head into the Alarm tab. Under the Alarm tab, we'll click Add, and it's here that we can select our Alarm Destination option. We have three to choose from, Email, Syslog, or Trap. We'll select Trap. We'll be sending SNMP traps to SAL. Here we'll add the IP address of the SAL gateway, which will act as our Alarm Receiving Host and we'll leave the port on UDP 162. We will then enter a community string that is suitable for SAL. In this case, SAL is not dependent on a community string, so we'll enter public. And now we'll select the trap events that we want to send to SAL. And it's a fairly simple process. As you see, I scroll down and I check the various um, components that we won't wish to alarm on, on under the IP Officer B5800. There's only two that we do not onboard, and that is phone change and QoS monitoring. Because of the alarm traffic generated, we only select those two, phone change and QoS monitoring, as needed. So we'll select OK to this form. You see here we can quickly review if we want that we've added a new trap destination host, and our configuration efforts are complete. So we'll save up the config, meaning we're going to now send this configuration up to the IP Office or B5800 core unit. It will require a reboot, as you see. It's, it's set for immediate reboot. We'll give the proper credentials, and we'll send up the file to the core unit. Our configuration efforts are now complete. Now that our configuration is complete, let's set up our tracing capabilities. So under the IP Office program group, we'll select the monitor application otherwise known as Sysmon or System Monitor, under Filters, Trace Options, we'll then go in and select our SNMP tracing capabilities under the Services tab. We have SNMP Events section, and we'll select Received Message Processing. Then we'll select Trap Generation and VAR Bind Processing as well. We'll select OK to that form, and now we can properly trace SNMP based trap generation events on the IP office or B1500 branch gateway. Here's an old fashioned way to trigger an alarm event. In upcoming releases of B1500 and IP office there will be a test alarm option in system status application but right now 
I'm actually going, as you see here under advanced, I'm going to reboot a core unit, the core unit we're working against. So I'll select that core unit, add proper authentication once again, and tell it to perform an immediate reboot, and select OK. Now if we go into System Monitor, which has now been set up for us to monitor trap generation events, we'll see that we are indeed sending now a trap to our SAL Gateway host and we see the, all the VAR bind and processing information. Now the very last section here will cover how to see the alarms coming into the SAL Gateway itself. So as you see here on a customer site SAL Gateway that the B1500 or IP office is alarming to, we've logged in as root, supplied the root password, and then you see we've navigated to directory opt avaya SAL Gateway spirit agent logging. So it's from this directory that we're going to issue the tail minus F command on the spirit agent operational dot log. That way we'll be able to tail the log and see all operational events which includes alarming into the spirit agent. So once we issue that command you'll see that we are seeing operational events in the log and we're going to now catch an alarm coming in as the B5800 is now coming back up online and sending a um, alarm clear event actually s telling the world that it is rebooted and now coming back up online. You'll notice that IP office and B5800 traps will send themselves to the SAL gateway and identify be identified as non-INADS alarms and then if you need to you can cross check on the trap OID um, with Sysmon as shown in the previous step. So this is a quick way to confirm that your IP office unit or B5800 core unit is in fact communicating with the SAL gateway and sending alarms to the SAL gateway which the SAL gateway is receiving and processing. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.